All right, so today we're going to be going over a Retina MacBook Pro that does not see the SSD. So here I have an SSD in here that is, well, you're not going to see shit anyway because the fucking screen is cracked. But you can tell that I haven't booted into an operating system because when I hit the caps lock key, it doesn't illuminate. So see, that's caps lock. I'm hitting caps lock and it's not illuminating because I'm not in an operating system. Um, this is, again, one of those machines where I wonder how in God's name you make any money. Uh, this is, you know, I have a lot of these wholesale companies that send these things and I really don't get, I, I just don't get it. So the SSD circuitry went bad, which means your SSD is probably dead. Your battery is exploding and the screen is cracked on a computer that if I were to go on Craigslist right now is worth about 850 bucks. And yeah, anyway, so let's go on and try to figure out why it is the SSD doesn't work. So this is an 820-3476 board. I'm going to take the SSD out for a second here. And we're going to go over what's wrong with it. So let's open the schematic here. And let me just make sure that you can see it. So this over here is the SSD connector. So this is where the SSD connects to the machine, J3700. Let's see what's going on on the J3700 page. So this is the SSD itself. This is where it plugs into the computer. So the SSD is going to be getting a 3 volt power line. This here is for clock. So SSD reset L. So anytime you see something like a reset signal like this, what's usually going on is it, something has to stabilize before something else turns on. So for example, in the older boards, let's just go over an example. Let's go back here and let me show you what I mean. So I'm going to go over to an older schematic here. This is going to be for one of the older boards. And let me just show you an idea of what the whole idea behind the reset circuit is. So for example, there are chips like the SMC that are very, very sensitive. They need to be running off of a very specific power line. However, the SMC is what turns on before everything else turns on. So which means that that's going to try to turn on before all the power is stabilized in the computer. So over here you have U6990 creating PP3V42 for the SMC. And then this chip creates SMC reset L, which goes to the SMC. The SMC is not going to try to turn on before it gets that reset signal because if it tries to turn on before the reset signal, it's going to crash because PP3V42 is not stabilized. This is a line that comes on before everything else. This can be fed from either 12 or 16 volts. It takes a second for that thing to stabilize. And the same thing is going to be true of the SSD here. So this, I'm, I'm taking a guess just because I don't feel like Googling and looking it up, that this has something to do with, uh, with reset. So let's see, you get... SSD reset L, I'm going to guess, comes from the PCH, which in this machine is integrated into the CPU. So let's try to figure out what here would have been, uh, yeah, so that comes from this, which is integrated into the CPU. All right, so now we're going to look for some hints to figure out where it is we should be looking first. Now remember, PP3V42 underscore G3 hot is a rail that very often has issues with Ripple because that rail starts at 18 volts from the charger and is being used to create three. You know, again, you, you plug in a knockoff charger, anything funky happens with your charger, anything funky happens with water, that little 3.4 volt signal for a split second may go all the way up to 16, and that causes very nasty things to happen. So let's see, if, let's see what's going on here, because we have a few things in this page. We have PP3V3SO, which is powering a few things on the SSD and also some of these other pieces around it. And then we have PP3V42 powering this supervisor and clock circuit over here. So I'm going to take a guess that something's going on with PP3, the one that's powered by PP3V42 because that's the power rail that usually has some damage done to it. So let's go under here and see if anything supports my conclusion, which is a, which is a guess. So this is the SSD connector. Now, none of the pins are bad on this. None of the pins on this connector show any damage on the inside. But if you do color adjust in the camera over here, you're going to see that one of them has the tiniest bit of dread right over here. That's one, two, three. That's pin number six. If we go back to the screen capture, and um, let's see. One, two, three, four, five. So we go to pin numbers. Let's see, the sixth pin down. One, two, three, four, five, and that's ground. So yeah, the fact that that pin looks a little messy, I don't really care because that, that, that's ground. Who gives a shit? So let's go back and go over the board and see if we find anything that gives us a clue. Let's flip it. Huh. Huh. 
Ah, I wonder what this is over here. So this over here is going to be, okay, this is not the right orientation. Let's, okay, here we go. So what I'm looking at over here that looks kind of nasty is the this three caps right by here. And this is for, what do you know? This is, for, this is the input for creating PP3v42. And then this chip over here, let's see, so let's just point this out. So this chip, these are the, these are the three caps, and this is the chip, and that doesn't really look great. You can see it doesn't really look great, even after the, you know, the ultrasonic bath, which surprises me because this particular place likes to use some kind of radioactive ultrasonic cleaner instead of a standard one. So usually all their stuff comes in like with the boards scorched off, much less any liquid residue on it. So we're going to go over here Let's and see what that's for. I'm 99.9% .9 certain that that's for creating PP3v42 and that there was ripple on the circuit for creating PP3v42. So that's U7090. Remember, this thing turns on. It actually works. So yeah, that is for the 3.42 volt power supply. So let's go back to SSD reset over here and let's look at what U3740 looks like. So when we go over to U3740, that's going to be over here. Let's go to U3740. And as you can see, that also has a little bit of uh, you know, junk on it. So see, this capacitor is for PP3v42, which is the input for um, the VDD pin of this chip, which is the, what's going to turn it on. And it's almost missing a side right over there. See this? So, that the, so there was clearly ripple on PP3v42, and that ripple probably killed the clock isolation for the SSD. So, let's turn on all the noisy shit. Get some work done. Takes a while for this thing to heat up. Yikes. Nasty, isn't it? Rule number one of flux, take the tube off. With the cap off the tube if you actually want to use it. Wouldn't that be smart?
I'm obviously using the wrong solder tip for this application. I'm obviously still using the wrong soldering tip for this application. Oh well, for a pad that was that fucked up. All right, so I don't really expect that I'm gonna get much better of a pad than the the, than the little shit stain that I that I have right there. So I'm gonna remove that chip, and we're gonna put a new capacitor on that line, and hopefully, I get an SSD. Okay, so we've taken off the chip. This is where you have to be a bit of an investigator. My soldering is awful. Isn't that awful? Can you believe people pay me for this shit? I can't. I don't have much trust for that trace, you know. Or that pad, because that, you know, you saw what I was looking at, right? This person. This is probably overkill, but call me paranoid. I just don't. I don't want to see this stuff again. A lot of what I do comes out of my desire to not see something again after I have fixed it.
Okay. All right, so now let's see if this thing has a working SSD. I hate reassembling A1502. It's incredibly annoying. Like really, really above and beyond annoying with where they put all these little things and yeah, why? Who does this shit? Being a dentist is annoying. Uh, say, uh, say. This is really probably the dumbest test I could possibly do, but I know that the SSD works even though you can't see shit on the screen because, look, see, I can lower the brightness and I can up the brightness. So, I mean, it, you still see a cracked and fucked up screen, but, like, I'm in an operating system and caps lock works. So, this is good to go. So, just to recap what it is we did to figure this out, so this is the page with the SSD connector. Everything looked fine on here except for one pin, and that pin was for ground, so that really didn't have much to do with it. So I look around and I see a few other things on this page. The other things I see on this page are powered by PP3V3SO, which is a very stable power rail, and PP3V42, G3 hot, which is a very unstable power rail in the case of liquid damage. I go around that area on the board and I notice that not only are the caps for PP3V42 a little messed with, not only is there corrosion there, which I am going to have to clean up later, but I also notice that there is a cap right along here, C3740, that's actually missing one end, which it can only lead me to believe that this chip saw a voltage spike. This is something that controls SSD reset. So what I do is I replace it and all is good in a boots and... That's it, and I hope you learned something.